Learning to drive is particularly difficult for autistic people. One person that understands this better than anyone is 42-year-old Julia Malkin. Well, I would describe autism as a world full of Shakespeare. Everything you read, everything you see on TV and in the films, everything people say on the buses, in the shops, in the streets, is all in Shakespearean English. We have to go through the whole of our lives trying to translate it into language we understand just to understand what you are talking about every single day. Not only can Julia drive, she is one of the most highly qualified driving instructors in the UK. One of her specialities is working with other autistic people. 17-year-old Laura has been taking lessons for a few months now. I've had about 12 or 14, and I think I'm going to need loads. How many lessons do you think you'll need? Loads. How many is loads? Probably about 100. Yeah, some of the reasons why driving is difficult for autistic people to learn basically are communication difficulties. Follow, check mirrors, cancel. Which way? Cancel, follow the road ahead, please. Using off the gas for me, that gives you enough time. He's off the gas for me. He's off the gas for me. Yeah. You cannot say, take the next turn on the left, otherwise, end up in someone's garden. You can't say straight over the roundabout, otherwise you literally go straight over it if they're not, not careful. The interpretation is very, very literal. So you need a very gentle, slow speed to be able to go around the bend safely. Can you follow the kerb where the kerb is going to? Sometimes there's no concept of uh, spatial awareness and judgment of speed. Am I, am I going too fast? Not at all. Your speed is fine. One of the worst things they can do is to emerge onto a road full of fast-moving traffic without caring about it. Stop! Handbrake, neutral, oh, handbrake, neutral, handbrake, neutral, 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 neutral. Well done! They will not naturally perceive danger. They will just troop out straight in front of the traffic without a care in the world if they are not trained. When I'm driving, I get distracted by um, people walking their dogs, people that are doing unusual things in the street, people that are doing anything, I just have to turn and have a look at what they're doing. But then I'm not looking at the road ahead, so. Becoming distracted is one of the traits that Julia frequently has to watch out for with her pupils and with herself. Oh, they were thinking, what's that over there? What's going on down here? There's an indicator over there, and all the concentration will be on that indicator. So the tendency there will be to steer towards it. You see something like the flashing repeated lights, things like this, repeated lights, repeated signs, bright red shirt over there. That will be distracting their attention. I'm thinking, look at that. The main distraction down here is the bright red car that's parked on our right. But what does it make you think when you see this big red car? Well, the first thing you think of is, is what's that? So you actually think, who? that car's bright red. And it, it makes you want to steer towards it. Let's have a closer look. Julia is one of only two known autistic instructors in the country. No one can be in traffic at this stage approaching a side road on our right. Nobody approaching at this side road, there's a car parked in it. We now have one oncoming vehicle, still at 30 miles an hour speed limit. A side road on the right, nobody coming through. Checking mirrors again, making sure it's safe before we approach the hill. Her knowledge and observation skills make her one of the safest drivers on the road. Just approaching into the new road now, checking mirrors as relief, make sure it's safe for bicycles, checking for the pedestrian crossing. There are several pedestrians on our right, but nobody's crossing over. The button doesn't appear to have been pressed. We have a sign there for old people, meaning there's probably an old folks home or retirement home nearby. There's a church on our right, but it's not a Sunday, so it shouldn't be anybody in the building at the moment. Following the but a late diagnosis of her autism meant that Julia had huge problems early in life. How did you get on with school? Uh, chronic. <laughs> <laughs> School to me was just a place I wanted to get out of as fast as I could. Uh, spastic, Mongol, um, ugly, um, thick, uh, idiot, dumb, anything. <laughs> you name it, they say it. Kids do. They have no restrictions. They will say it. 
got thrown in the pond at school, came home soaking wet, have had my arms broken, have had bones broken, dislocations, been to hospital, had an attempted rape, um, had two suicide attempts, one at 17, one at 18, nervous breakdown at 18, sick as a dog for over a year and a half, failed on my O-levels completely, had to quit school a year later, been through dead-end dead jobs, and here I am today talking to you. Despite her vulnerability, Julia has managed to excel and make a permanent mark in life. This is my approved driving instructor certificate. The second one down is the Diamond Advanced Driving Instructor Test. It was one of the first advanced driving tests I took, 18th May 2004. And this bottom one is the Institute of Advanced Motorists insignia with their motto, which is skill with responsibility. We need confidence and ability to achieve more than neurotypical people do. That is because our self-esteem is naturally weak because of our communication difficulties. Driving does help to resolve that kind of thing by giving us the ability to believe in ourselves. Anxiety is one of the many symptoms that people with autism have to overcome to find confidence in life. Julia found her confidence when she discovered a passion for driving. Good afternoon, how are you? You okay? So you've learnt a lot about AS people and how they operate and work and communicate. Well, I'm one of them. I'm one of these very strange AS people that you're going to meet through the course of your university and you're going to find... Having overcome a fear of public speaking, Julia now gives talks to raise awareness on the needs of autistic people. You're going to find that people like myself get called names 24-7. I was called spastic, I was called mongol, I was called worse names than that, I assure you. That is the sort of thing that can throw someone's self-esteem right through the floor. And that is the kind of thing that people are going to come here with. And they're going to come here with a self-esteem completely shattered and smashed. Because all we want to do is belong. That is all every single person with AS wants to do. That is a long, hard battle. Thank you very much for this. I want all autistic people in the UK to know that regardless of what the world says and what society thinks, that they have the ability to achieve if they get the support. <laughs>